Hi, I'm Al Daher, uh, one of the proprietors of Mickey's Bait and Tackle in North Syracuse. My two brothers and I have been there about 25 years. The place has been there over 60. It's hard to believe that a Central New York tradition could survive that long. But uh, today we're with noted author, artist, Peter Thompson. And uh, Peter, I've known him for quite some time now. He just did a book uh, entitled Freshwater Game Fish in North America, an illustrated guy. This is a beauty. It's a, sort of a lifelong commitment to the fish that inhabit our waters in North America. It's unbelievable. And um, today we're here with Mr. Thompson. And we're going to be tying a traditional Cary Stevens style trolling fly. Is that right, Peter? Yes, it is. Um, these flies were originated in New England to imitate bait fishes. Uh, primarily smelt, which were introduced after landlocked salmon were introduced into New England waters uh, to provide a forage base for them. And uh, the gray ghost is probably the most famous of these flies, and that was in d definitely tied to imitate a rainbow smelt. The other flies that Carrie Stevens designed uh, after World War II, when a lot of soldiers were returning home and going fishing, um, have names like General MacArthur and uh, other names celebrating the various guys that came back, Shang's favorite, um, Centennial. So all her flies did not represent smelt. She was a milliner by trade in the wintertime and tied flies in the summertime. Um, because these are baitfish imitations, we use long hooks. This happens to be a particularly large one, and I chose that tonight so that we could uh, show you folks in the demonstration, and it would be a bigger fly. In fact, it's quite a big fly, a bigger fly than anybody would probably normally use. A lot of these flies were originally used for trolling, and when they were fished at Middle Dam, they were fished from boats and simply allowed to swing in the current below the boat. Um, so there wasn't much casting done with them. Um, when you tie a fly, a streamer fly, and this one happens to have a floss body, as many of them do, always use a thread color that is as similar to the color of the floss as you can get. In that way, the, the thread, if you use black thread on this, for instance, and then wrap the orange floss over it for your body, when the fly gets wet, the black thread will show through the orange floss. So I'm using an orange thread and then I'm going to tie a little tag of tinsel just at the top of the bend of the hook. What does this signify? I don't really know. Uh, it, it may very well be a carryover from Atlantic salmon wet flies which very many of which have these little tinsel tags on them. And the way I tie these in, as you just saw, is I wrap the thread back from my starting point to where I want the tag to start. And then I wrap the tinsel forward. And you're going to see this fly rock. I'm used to tying on a C-clamp vise, and this is a pedestal vise. And I have a tendency, because I tie big flies, to put a lot of pressure on my hooks. All right, there's the little tinsel tag tied in. Just adds a little bit of extra flash to the end of the fly. And then I trim that off. And then I take a piece of tinsel that's going to lie in as the rib. And my tying method is to put this tinsel down first. And again, it's going to be silver tinsel. And our uh, contemporary mylar tinsels come uh, silver on one side and gold on the other side. So I tie this in with the silver side up. And you need to be careful as you tie these, and I'll show you this as we go along, to make sure that the right side stays up. Because if you twist it, it the tinsel will turn over and show the opposite side color, which if it happens, don't worry about it. Don't, don't throw the fly away. This is four-strand rayon floss. Comes in a huge variety of colors. It's used for all kinds of fly bodies. And if you're tying with light colors, make sure your hands are clean. Because if your hands are dirty, what little dirt is on your fingers 
is going to show up on the, the floss, especially these light yellows and oranges. It's hard to say which exact floss colors Carrie Stevens used when she was designing her flies. I prefer this sort of pumpkin orange or burnt orange floss as opposed to a bright orange floss. Now, here, here's a little trick that I use. And many fly tires do this. So to avoid getting lumps and bumps in these bodies, which should be very smooth, you want to make sure that the floss stays on the top of the hook. And I always tie my materials as far up the hook as I can. And this one's a little bit short. And in that way, first of all, the material, when I, you'll see when I tie the floss in, doesn't lump and bump because the other the under layer of the floss has spiraled around the hook so you want to make sure you pinch that floss under the top of the hook and you'll make a nice smooth body and because this hook is bronze in color it won't discolor your floss too much when it gets wet take that little. You that tied thing. flies for L.L. Bean, didn't you? I tied flies for L.L. Uh, Bean uh, directly. I tied flies for the Hook and Hackle Company and, um, and then tied flies for L.L. Bean through a subcontract with a small, through a small fly shop in Central Maine. When you wrap the floss, keep it flat. If you can see how this is a flat surface here, the four strands are lying beside one another so they don't lump up. A lot of times when I'm tying flies, streamer flies like this with a floss body, I will double the four strand floss so I'll actually be tying with eight strand floss and that has the effect of just making it easier and faster to tie. The these long hooks are a challenge um, and if you're going to get serious about tying these kinds of streamers or any kind of streamers really or Atlantic salmon flies or big steelhead flies or spay flies you want a vise that's going to be a very solid stand a very solid holder for your, th for your hook um, this happens to be a regal vise I've tied on a Regal Vice for many years and uh, again as I said the pedestal is a challenge for me because I'm used to a seat clamp vise. When you're tying flies of this size you want to put a considerable amount of pressure on your thread and any other material working. See how I pull the vise? I, I would if I had this clamped and we're not clamping it because we can't fit a clamp on this table. When you wind your tinsel keep it consistently the wraps consistently apart from one another so that the distance between them is the same. And you can see how as I get to the head of this very long hook, the hook bounces up and down. Most of us won't be tying these large streamers that much um, because they're way too big to fish uh, or to cast. and. Um, most of us don't troll flies that much, but this fly would be uh, appropriate for a trolling stream. Speaking of trolling, right now in our neck of the woods, the Finger Lakes, Skinny Atlas in particular, is producing rainbow trout and landlocked salmon on flies like these trolled behind the boat. And the interesting thing is, a lot of the people that fish these flies are using conventional spinning tackle with six pound test mono. You could do a whole show on just tackle and technique with regards to trolling these. Most people prefer to use a fly rod with maybe a level three weight fly line and a 25 foot liter of six pound test line which is a lot more fun once you fight the fish with a single action fly rod and reel. And, and that because partly because when the fish runs on a fly reel that has a nice sounding drag it sounds good. Yeah it does. Um, I backed up a little bit so that I can show you a thread color change. The head on this fly calls for black thread. Again, I tied the body with the orange thread so that it wouldn't show through the floss. 
I tie in my black thread for the head, just wrap it back a little bit like this, and then I take my two bobbins, pull them down four or five inches from the fly, and just spin them. And again, Mrs. Stevens tied her flies without a vise, just by hand. There are still quite a few people who do that. That's um, amazing. I learned to tie with a vise, and that's what I do. All I do is spin that, and then take the thread that I'm changing to, the black thread, and wrap it over the yellow thread. And as we progress through the fly, we're going to be putting more wraps on top of that. And so it's very secure. Now, I, in spite of the fact that I've tied these Carrie Stevens flies for many, many years, I continue to have to look at reference to make sure I'm putting the right sequence of materials on because she changes the materials that she uses from fly to fly. And um, the older I get, the less memory I have, and so I have to refer to the pattern book. Um, this wonderful book that is no longer in print is a book all about Carrie Stevens flies. To, uh, written and illustrated photographically by the Hilliards. And uh, if anyone is really interested in this type of flies, that's the source. Unfortunately, it's out of print, so it'll cost you a few dollars used online. The, the byword for Maine New England streamers is, and they'd say in Maine, keep them spice. So when it calls for bucktail, you don't want to put on a big wad of bucktail. You want to put on a fairly small amount. And that's so that the fly continues to have a translucent quality to it. This is the underbelly of the fly, again representing the belly of the fish. And you pinch it under the fly, under the hook, hold it tightly, and secure it with the thread. Trim off the excess, and I didn't wrap that quite well enough. So it's moving a little. There we are. And then the green beauty, which is what I'm tying again, calls for a golden pheasant crest under this underbelly. And it wants to be about a third of the length of the fly body, the hook body, the hook length. And you tie it in so it turns up under the, the white bucktail. And next, it calls for a little bit of white hackle as an additional throat. This happens to be a white large saddle hackle, which is very effective for tying these kinds of throats. Good for Atlantic salmon flies, trout wet flies. So in addition to the golden pheasant crest, we have that nice little white throat. One of the things I really like about these flies is they're beautiful. And it's, it's a pleasure to just tie them and fish them just because they're so beautiful. And the classics are classics because they work. If I had to have one streamer fly to fish anywhere, it would be a gray ghost. Or perhaps the green beauty. I, I, for some reason, I'm partial to the green beauty. Although the gray ghost is a lovely fly. This is peacock curl, and I prefer peacock curl to come off the stick of the tail of the peacock because my experience is that the strung peacock curl generally is not of as high quality as that which comes off the tail stick. And then you just lay this in, again, the opposite of what you did on the underbelly, and let it lie parallel to the body of the fly. You may or may not notice, if you, if you haven't tied many streamers, you probably wouldn't notice, but if you have tied a lot of streamers, you're noticing that my materials are very close to the bend of the hook. And that's because I spent about 20 years living in Maine and fishing for landlocked salmon, trolling these streamer flies. And I remember one day in particular when I had probably 12 or 15 fish hit my flies and not one of them actually got the hook in its mouth. They will on certain days, and brown trout would do the same thing. Um, a young man who was at a meeting I was at not too long ago was talking about Delaware River brown trout coming up behind streamers and just nipping the tail of the feather. So 
in order to avoid that, they, actually there's two ways to avoid it. The, f the first way, and the typical way in New England, was to tie tandem hooks, which would be two short hooks um, tied together by either monofilament or wire. Um, I prefer the single hook because if you use tandem hooks and a fish hits the front hook, the back hook is spinning around. And I've had uh, salmon come to hand with scars all over their face from that hook.